And well, I don't really know if you watched my previous video talking about FSR4 and the 9060 XT and some of the some of the things that you might have missed in the presentation on AMD's presentation, but we do have some very interesting things. And now we have another interesting thing that some people might have missed. Rockham on Windows. It seems that finally Rockham is coming to Windows and the performance in terms of productivity in some scenarios is going to increase a lot. So starting with Computex, today at Computex, now on the workstations part, I just want to show you that we now have the Threadripper Pro 9000 series. It is actually insane, I remember where the, when the CPUs and um, the Threadripper CPUs were like 8 cores, 16 threads or 12 cores, 24 threads and now we have Threadreapers. I'm not talking about the Epic CPUs because the Epic CPUs have way more, I'm talking about the Threadreapers which are kind of an in-between the consumer and the workstation type of CPU. And now we have up to 96 cores and 192 threads. This is just insane. Technology really evolved in a chip like this size. We have 96 cores and 192 threads. And in a small paper of this size, you have today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Benchmarks in terms of Cinebench, Cinebench world record for workstations, of course. Then we have uh, some comparison with uh, with a Xeon uh, W9 35956 95X, sorry, not six. And of course, in terms of Autodesk Maya, V-Ray, PTC Creo, and so on, we have basically a lot more performance. Now we go to the thing that it's more interesting: Rockham, the open platform for compute acceleration. Developers demand a great software experience with ease of use, out of the box experience and regular updates. Yes, this is one of the things that I've been asking for ages and of course there are people older than me that have been asking this for even more time and finally, finally, we have improvements to Rockham. So firstly, we start with new products added to the, um, to the support basically the latest products like the, the Radeon RX 9000 series and in the previous videos that you saw uh, I was testing Blender, the open benchmark Blender with, um, with the RX 9000 series and it seems that they weren't supporting Rockham yet. Meaning that supposedly with this Rockham update in terms of Blender and so on, the performance will increase. Of course, I'll test it when it comes out, but I'm pretty sure that the performance will increase since now it is officially supported. And we also have the Ryzen AI Max CPUs or APUs supporting Rockham as well. So it's great, especially now that we have the AI Max products where the integrated graphics are just crazy, crazy fast for an integrated GPU, of course. And having Rockham means that you can actually, well, do some content creation with those same APUs, which is great as well. We also have simplifying the experience with inbox support for Linux. And we did have support for several versions or several um, layouts of, not layouts, I'm not finding the correct word, but well, several, several versions of Linux. We had Fedora before. Um, and we have some other variations, some branches of Fedora too. And now we have support for OpenSUSE, Ubuntu as well in the second half of 2025 and Red Hat Apple or EPEL with extra packages for enter enterprise Linux. Okay, extra packages for enter enterprise Linux. <laughs> and, and yeah, second half of 2025, but again, really, really good thing. But now we have this one as well expanding open source or expanding open acceleration with full Windows support. And what we had before in Windows was the Linux in Windows WSL, which is basically Windows sub sub subsystem or Linux subsystem in Windows, something like that. Then we have the HIP SDK, which improves the rendering when it comes to Windows in, in things like Blender and so on. But now we have more. Now we have finally Finally, full Windows support for ONNX EP with preview in July 2025, meaning that in a month, in a month and a half, maybe two months, we're gonna have ONNX EP full support. And I believe this is also related to the new AMD models that we have with ONNX and so on. I tested this video with Amuse 3.0 and even with those drivers, you can indeed use the ONNX 
uh, better models for other things and that will increase the performance a lot. Comparing to the original models of stable diffusion and so on, the AMD models, the improved AMD models just work much, much faster. And if this comes with full Windows support, like right out of the box, this is a huge, a huge thing. People working with AI and so on, they don't really need to, to go to lower performance or they don't need to tweak this and that. They don't need to go to the Linux subsystem in order to make things work. No, they just go there, plug and play and it will work. And that's beautiful on the MD side, finally. And of course, we also have the preview for the quarter three of 2025 for PyTorch as well. And I remember several users, several users in the past, sorry, um, talking about the PyTorch incompatibilities and so on with AMD GPUs and so on. And it seems that it is finally getting fixed, having again full Windows support, but now for PyTorch as well. Really interesting and I'm really eager to test these features as soon as they come out. On top of this, we also have unlocking higher quality AI models at the edge. And sorry, I'm not much into AI, but it seems that we have text to image comparison with a, with a prompt saying the same thing with a, with a Chinese, a shot of a Chinese male wearing a, a shirt or a, something like that that says Computex while holding a laptop, whatever. And this is 1B, I don't really know what 1B is, using the FP16 instructions versus 8B using FP16 as well. And the difference in terms of image generation is just crazy. Look at the difference, just so, so much better one compared, compared to other. It's just insane. And now remember when people were talking about the RX 9070 XT with 32 gigabytes of VRAM? I believe this is the one. This is the 9070 XT with 32 gigabytes the Pro R9700. As you see, 128 AI accelerators, 32 gigabytes of GDDR6, and even the power draw is around the same 300 watts. So I'm pretty sure that this is kind of a 9700 XT, but with 32 gigabytes, and of course optimized for professional workloads. Everything just works. <laughs> Just in case you want to see a comparison presented by AMD, we have the RTX 5080 compared to the R9700 with 32 gigabytes for larger AI models. And again, we have just one to three. I really wanted to see the applications, but 100% three times faster, four times faster, four, four, and almost five times the performance. Not faster, five times the performance, 3.6 times the performance and so on, which is a huge increase. And well, I guess that's all for this video. I just wanted to talk a bit a bit more, yeah, I would say a bit more about Rockham support for Windows, which is one of the things that AMD has been lacking about. Rockham support on Windows, like plug and play support, which is one of the things that we need. Uh, the normal common user just don't want to be tweaking every little thing in order to, to be able to, to use the full performance of their AMD GPUs. They just want to go there, use the GPU, click, uh, render, click something, and it will work flawlessly. And this is one of the things where AMD was lacking a lot. And now it seems at least for people using a lot ONNX and PyTorch, they will be able to have way better performance, especially on the 9000 series, which is great without needing to use Linux and so on. Just go to Windows and you're good to go. So thank you, AMD, for doing this. This was past you. Honestly, this was past you and should have been done, well, ages ago. But still, better late than never. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, watch the previous video that I released with the 9060 XT, with the FSR4 implementations and so on, so on, so on. Watch it because there are some really interesting things on the MD side regarding those features. Really, really interesting. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Cheers. Oh, <laughs>